Today I'm going to be throwing my favorite mug shape, both to throw and to drink out of. I'm going to start off by centering the clay. I have about uh, one and a half pounds of clay here. And what I'm aiming for is a mug that will be will hold about 12 to 14 ounces of liquid. I like a big mug. And that's what this one is. So it'll also look much bigger since than, than the final mug will be since the clay will shrink through the firing process about 14 percent. So we really have to have a big mug to start. So I'm coning the clay, bringing it up, using the base of my left hand to press the clay, and then when I bring it down, I'm pressing with the top of my right hand, with my thumb primarily. So here again, the base of my left hand is pressing against my right hand, and that brings the clay up. And I'm doing this to align the particles, get rid of air bubbles, and center the clay. And I can feel an air bubble, so definitely need to do this. And I'll do one more. And what I'm aiming for is the tuna can shape. It's funny, I say that, but I don't actually really think about it as a tuna can. But I guess that's what most people refer to it as, because it does look like one. All right. All right. Now I take my two thumbs, against pressing against each other, and I'm going to drill down. And then when I get to the thickness that I want for the base, I'm going to pull them away from each other to open up the cylinder. So with mugs, I tend to not really trim the bottom, so I like to do something interesting on the base of the mug. And I use a wiggle wire, which I have here. And you can cut straight across or you can go like this and make different patterns. You can do it in a wavy shape. It's kind of fun um, to do. So it gives a little bit of interest on the bottom of the piece, a little bit of a surprise, an unexpected surprise. So now I am compressing the bottom. I do this by moving my fingers back and forth and pressing hard with a little bit of water. I'm primarily pressing with this finger, and this one is a guide. the rim a little bit. We like to keep our rim strong. We don't want it to get weak and wimpy. All right. So holding my fingers down here at the bottom, this, this one is doing the majority of the work and this one is a guide. I use a sponge because I like a little bit of a bigger surface. So I'm pressing with that bottom finger until I get a ring of clay. My inside hand, it's this one also pressing against this one. I try to do it with pretty even pressure, though I think that my outside hand tends to press a little bit harder than my inside hand. And you can tell that because I'm my cylinder isn't going straight up, it's going in at an angle, which means that there's more pressure from my outside hand, which is okay, because for this particular shape, it's fine to, to create the cylinder like this. And actually, in most things, you it's nice to do it like that. And then you can open it up when you're ready to make your shape. All right, so now I'm pressing again. I've got, waiting until I get that little ring of clay. And then I'm coming up. I use a pretty fast wheel when I'm doing this part. And it's you have to kind of get the hang of what um, speed your hands have to go up to match the speed of the wheel. Um, you can kind of see the throwing lines, I think. 
you want them to be pretty straight if they're going up at an angle um, then then something is either too fast or too slow but all right so let's do another one One more pull. And I think we should have the cylinder at the height we want it to be at. All right, so one thing I forgot to say is since all the clay is on the bottom and that's what you're pulling up, you're putting the most amount of pressure when you're here at the bottom. And then as you go up, usually about the top one third, I will lighten my pressure because that part of the wall is already thinned out and you don't want to thin it out more but I will always go up to the top of the cylinder because I don't want to throw the cylinder off. Okay. Uh, I think we need one more. See those so now you can really see those lines and how they are pretty even cylinder you know circles okay as always we compress our rim and now we're gonna make those lines go away because we want to um, straighten out our wall a little well it's pretty straight but clean it up get rid of all that goo we can it can weaken the wall and we don't want that to happen while we're making the piece while we're shaping it so we get rid of all of that there wasn't actually too much so that wasn't bad all right now we're going to shape it so you can do this using a rib or uh, i guess even a, a throwing stick if the clay is being cooperative i really like to just do it with my hand so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use these teeth these two fingers and in this case, because I'm going to be pushing out, the inside hand is the one that's really controlling what's going on. So the outside hand is just for something for the inside hand to push up against. So when I'm down here at the bottom, I'm not really going to push. And then as I get to this, this part right here, I'm trying to belly out the shape. So my inside hand is pushing pretty hard. Not really, really hard, but hard. And now I'm lightening the pressure a bit. So I'm trying to create a little bit of a curve. I don't want it to be, I want it to be nice and smooth. I don't want it to be a, you know, drastic line. And then as I come up towards the top, again, my inside hand is going to push out to flare out the rim. All right, so now we want to get more out for the belly. So one thing to note is that when you're pressing out like this, the cylinder will actually shorten a bit. So if you want a really tall mug, keep that in mind when you're making the cylinder. Okay. So what I like is for the flared out top to be about the same place as the belly. So I think I need to push the belly out just a little bit more. Okay, take a look. That looks pretty good. I can also, at this point, if I want to smooth out the wall a bit, I could take a rib and um, just go up the side. And from down here, I could do a little more for shaping it if I wanted to. You could use a softer rib if you wanted to curve it a little bit more. The other thing you want to do is up here at the lip. We Nobody likes a fat lip that's uncomfortable to drink out of. So you want to create a bit of an edge on the inside. So using my finger, I press a little bit on the inside. And then you take your chamois to smooth the whole thing out or you can use your fingers or whatever. And we have a little gunk of clay. Let's get rid of that. All right. 
The other thing I like to do is create a little swirl in the center of the base. So I take a wooden tool and go down to the bottom and with the wheel going relatively slow, I pull the wooden tool towards me. I, actually, I guess it's not quite towards me. And I create a little swirl on the bottom. And then we want to clean up the foot a little. We just have just a little bit of extra clay to get rid of. And there wasn't too much. And there we go. And you can see it's a nice huggable mug. You'll be able to put your hands around it, which is what I like to do. I'll put a pretty big handle on it um, so that you can put your hand through. I'm not one of those little dainty handles that you hold like this. It's going to be a nice big one. And um, I guess that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.